Hey, Nicole Huntsman, your astrologer from ModernCosmic.com. Uh, continuing our moon series in Sinistry, Inter Aspects, let's talk about moon and Mercury. So uh, the moon is going to be one person's emotional, instinctive nature, and the Mercury is going to be the other person's communication style, the way that they think, uh, how they listen, how they speak. All right. So as you know, with astrology, we have got different zodiac signs, different house placements, um, you know, where these this moon and this Mercury are going to fall. Now, you need to pay attention to sort of with that moon, is it in a, a zodiac sign or a house placement that has more of a sort of outward extroversion of its expression or is it more sort of introverted in its expression? I think this is particularly impor important with moon Mercury contacts because these are both about, moon is about wanting to be understood usually, or it's that emotional, you know, that need to feel comfortable. You need someone, your partner to sort of understand how that operates inside of you. The other Mercury is how someone thinks and how they understand with their logical mind. So you've got, obviously this is sort of ration, rationality and irrationality because the heart is irrational and the, the mind is rational. So if you've got somebody whose Mercury is making a harsh, aspect to the other person's moon, or if they just aren't talking to each other, if they're not in the same element, if they're not in the same um, sign, if they're not conjunct one another, or if they're not sextile to one another, um, then you have issues of one person's heart, their emotions, uh, feeling as though they're not heard, they're not understood in a sense. There's something about people who have the, the, the emotional nature that's more introverted. So if you've got a water sign, if you've got your moon in a water house or an earthy house or an earth sign on your moon, um, there's more of a, I, I always, I tend to use the word shyness with expression, but it's, it's this, it's insular. Okay. Um, you need a partner that either that first of all recognizes that you process things more inside of yourself uh, and that um, gently draws you out with their mercury. So if someone's mercury is in the same element, the same sign, uh, or is making a nice, is in a complementary element, you know, maybe perhaps sextiling, uh, sextiling your moon, then they have this ability to pull you out of, um, you know, and draw you out. And, and it's like they understand you um, and they can give words to your feelings because feelings are unconscious. Feelings don't have words. They're, they're just, uh, they just feel like something, right? <laughs> Says the person with the moon in the eighth house. Um, so and on the flip side, if you've got somebody whose Mercury is making uh, an opposition or square or some type of a, a more difficult angle, or if you've got someone whose Mercury in their birth chart is poorly afflicted by, say, Saturn, then you have someone whose communication style is going to be more... Um, has more of a critiquing quality to it. Okay. Someone who's Mercury square Saturn, they're very good at looking at information in a very logical, linear manner, naming things, lining things up. And emotions don't really work that way. You've got the rational mind versus the, the moon person whose heart is irrational. And they're going to feel even more irrational when they have times where they're upset or they're worried or whatever emotion is washing, flooding over them at that moment. They'll, they'll feel like they're not understood by the, the mercury person, okay? And, and, and that ends up being hurt feelings. And the mercury person feeling like, why are you making a big deal out of this? The moon person feeling like, ah, you're not, you don't understand me. So uh, look at your charts. This is a really important really important inner aspect in my mind. It's funny because I've heard some people say it's not important. And I think, of course it's important. This is a huge part of how we communicate with one another. Uh, you know, we can on a heart level sort of feel for one another and understand one another emotionally, but it's something, there's something else about someone's mercury making aspect to your heart. Like they, they get you and they can talk to you about it and they can teach you. So that's the other thing. Uh, Mercury to me is always a, there's an element of learning with Mercury and the moon is the heart and it's not something that, as I said, it's not conscious. So there is a teacher, the Mercury person is going to be sort of the teacher, the moon person, sort of uh, the person that's learning. And the Mercury person is actually teaching the moon person about their emotions in a way that is typically, if it's in a nice flow, a uh, conjunction, trine, sextile, Perhaps an opposition in certain with certain like the mutable signs or perhaps the um, yeah the cardinal signs maybe just depends. Uh, so uh, also one other thing, pay attention to the moon and the mercury in both people's charts. Are these chart rulers? 
then they're really important, okay? Or are these in angular houses, first, fourth, seventh, tenth? Pay attention to that. That will make these planets even more important in their in the way that they relate to one another. Okay, so you gotta look at the whole big picture, the whole picture. Okay, thanks so much. If you have questions or, or comments about this, please leave them and uh, on to Moon Venus. Okay, bye. <music>